Um, so this this year we set out to um, represent as many people within the School of Science and Technology um, and we'd like to engage more students and staff by holding a range of events from socials, career fairs, to semi-formal events like this one. So this is our um, second ever wine and cheese event and some of you may have attended last year. This year our inspiration from this event comes um, through something known as a story kinder. Um, an event that myself and a few of my committee members have come to truly enjoy. Through our version of this event, we want to show you that now, more than ever, science is a part of everyone's life. We want to give our own lecturers uh, a chance to tell their story whilst also engaging students, um, as we are the next generation of future science scientists. With that being said, we'd like to start. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What I'd like to do today, uh, tonight, slash evening, is uh, introduce our first speaker. Um, our first speaker is senior lecturer in evolutionary biology at Middlesex University and has interests in evolutionary biology, freshwater biology and ecology, as well as UK natural history. When pressed, he does admit to research interests associated with fish biology, biology, pond ecology, and anything his undergrads research for their projects. Steve's current research considers aspects of salmonite biology and Scottish hillwork ecology. He is the Linnaeus Society Liaison Fellow for the London Freshwater Group and has served on the Council for the Freshwater Biology Biological Association. He is still far more at home splashing about in ponds than he is facing audiences. Please welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Steve, Dr. Steve Kett. Ladies and gentlemen, can you all hear me at the back? Do I hear, do I see nods? I see nods. Excellent stuff. Good show. Right, okay. Um, this talk, I was told to talk about my life, how I came to science, how I came to Middlesex. And so I've decided to give you chapter one, which is how I came to find Middlesex, if you like. Ah, there we go. So, this is the earliest photograph of me I can find. It's around about when I was about seven or eight years old, something like that. And notice, water, boat. So, uh, I was heavily involved with water pretty much from the first time I can remember. Um, this is an area I was lucky enough to have very close to my house, to my home when I was young. Um, I was born in a small village just outside Norwich in Norfolk, and these are known as the marshes. As you can see, they aren't really sure whether they're land or water, and they fluctuate between one and the other as time goes by. And I spent an awful lot of time down there as a child and as a youth. It's a very wonderful place, gorgeous place. You know, for a, for a kid, it was heaven on earth, it was great. <coughs> As for my parents, they were somewhere between Darwin and Nietzsche. Uh, that which didn't kill me would only make me stronger, and if it did kill me, well, that was just evolution in action. So I was pretty much given a free reign to do what I wanted, and, and that was cool. That was good. The marshes themselves, I mean, they're not a great nature reserve. There are otters, there are harriers, there are kingfishers, that kind of thing. But most of the material down there, is the common or garden, run-of-the-mill stuff that you will find on most marshes around the UK and indeed in many areas of Europe. But for me, that was ideal. I spent a lot of time just watching, spent a lot of time tracking, looking at things like, I mean, it sounds a bit kind of weird, I guess, for the, for the non-field biologists amongst you, but dung can be very interesting for those people that want to follow animals around and know what they're doing. And... Uh, it was a good place also to practice observation and taxonomy skills, learning what things were, learning how to name them. Meanwhile, at school, when I was at primary school, I was in the sailing club. These are the frostbites. They're called the frostbites because they only sail in the wintertime because of the dreaded curse of the Norfolk rivers, which are the plastic admirals, people in cabin cruises that go there on holiday and create all sorts of problems for them. When I got to grammar school, you had a choice. 
You could do normal sports, which involved cross-country running, which I loathed, or you could go rowing. So I went rowing. Most of the guys in the rowing team were like me. We hated cross-country running. Most of us were anglers, and so we spent most of our time wandering up and down the river looking for places to go fishing. So we weren't a particularly successful rowing team, I'm afraid. But, uh, but with that and the, the, uh, the sailing, I did learn how to handle a boat, and that came in very, very useful later. As I've already mentioned, I also became an angler. I became a bit of an obsessive angler, manically keen on fish, and that also flavoured my life into the future as well. I went to university at Royal Holloway. This is one of the quads. This is the chapel where I, I, was, um, where I graduated. And uh, it has some rather odd traditions. For instance, in the picture gallery, where the exams are held, there is this picture by Lancey. It's called Man Proposes, God Disposes, and shows some rather unlikely polar bears tearing apart the remains of the Franklin expedition in 1864, I think. The, uh, the tradition is, if you sit next to it while you're having an exam, you either fail the exam, or you go mad. It's like a tosh. I sat next to it doing an exam. I didn't fail. I'll go back. As you can see, it's pretty. Really pretty. And so the people that ran the place were quite wise. The last thing they wanted was a lot of mud-spattered biologists wandering around making the place look untidy. So we were all exiled. But what a happy exile. This is Alderhurst. It's a country house just down the road from the main, main campus. And there we have 180 acres of woodland, marshland, and a, a, a whole variety of different habitats which we could exploit and utilize for field biology. And it was becoming quite obvious at that point if there was any kind of biology going on, it was going to be field biology as far as I was concerned. At the same time, I got involved in organizations or societies within the university. Um, I joined IFIS, which was the Institute for Impure Science, which was a science fiction reading club. And being the nerd and the geek that I am, I also joined GameSoc, the gaming society. What I didn't know when I joined them was there was a turf war between the two. And, you know, it's, it was a bad plan for nerds to fight amongst nerds, because nerds at that time were not popular. There was no geek chic in those days. It was a bad plan. So they wanted to bring them back together. Now, I would managed to join both without exciting the enmity of either. And so, without telling me this was going on, because I was completely oblivious to this, they said, Steve, would you mind standing for chairman of both? So I said, yeah, all right. I was flattered. I thought I was being done a favour. So um, they stood me. I got voted in. Then they told me what the situation was, and so there is some truth in that story, in that saying, beware of geeks bearing drifts. This, by the way, is one of the products. This is Steve Palmer. I don't know if you know Steve Palmer or not. Uh, he and I and a few other guys used to sit around drinking lots of coffee, <coughs> playing lots of games, and talking a great deal about alien biology. He was very keen to become a science fiction author. So he spent a lot of his time giving me drafts to read, and I would edit them and so on. And he now has 14 published books to his credit. So there is one spin-off from, uh, uh, from our activities. I'm very proud to say, if you look in this one, I get an acknowledgement. How cool is that? <laughs> then I met John Ponton and John Langley, the ant men. These guys were working on com competitive um, interactions in different species of uh, ants, Lazius niger, Lazius uh, flavors. And, uh, John was very keen on biking. I was a biker at the time. And uh, he lent me this book on competition and coexistence of species that John Pontin had read, uh, written rather, I beg your pardon. And uh, I spoke to John about it. John Pontin, too many Johns, I know. And the important thing was, I didn't know this, but he had two years of PhD funding spare. And a, a little while later in the third year, he wandered over to me and said, Do you fancy doing a PhD? I said, Yeah. And so it started. Now, John's book was not very popular with many competition people because he trashed a lot of what they did. His definition of competition were extremely precise. And so he and I decided we would test competition. He was already testing it using ants. I would do it in an aquatic milieu, and I would use fish. 